Okay, let's see how this goes. We're talking about session number nine, lesson number eight. Let's go. <laughs> Again, let's grow. And what is our third one, our third G? This is a 3G message, right? Let's glow. Why do we say let's glow? Because the whole world needs light. There's just too much darkness. So let there be light. So that's where, what our message is. So today is the law of our environment. And the environment, all of those things which are around us, that we surround ourselves with, that influence us, that pressure us, that uh, push us, that pull us. <laughs> So if we've got all of those kind of things going on, uh, what our society does to us, culture, all the current fads and ideas, oh my goodness. We better get strengthened, right? And another word for strengthen is investing. So we're talking about another law. And we've got to remember these are, there are natural natural laws and there are spiritual laws these are laws if we learn again if we learn how to work with them then if we learn how to work with gravity the law of gravity things will go good if we don't learn how to work with them anyway this is the law of environment so Let's just read this quote that you see here. Investing in yourself is the best. We've got to go for the best. Remember sometimes that, that good is the worst enemy of the best. <laughs> Can you catch that? Can you get that? Good, sometimes good, fine, okay, all right, is the best. No. <laughs> Sometimes good is the worst enemy of the best. So investing in yourself is the best investment, the best kind of environment you will ever have, you will ever make. So it will not only improve your life. So there's a purpose, there's a reason behind this. Why do we go inward so that we can go outward? So we do it because so there will be something to give. So it will not only improve your life, but it will improve the lives of all those around you. So that's what it's all about. The law of environment. Growth thrives in Keyword conducive surroundings. See your notes up above. And the environment that you see uh, for me here, you can tell where I am. <laughs> I wish, <laughs> you wish, we were all just sitting on the beach uh, with our around the table just uh, having a great conversation with a tropical breeze blowing on us, right? This is an, an environment. This is a conducive. Remember the key word I just, just mentioned, conducive environment. So what do we do for growth? It thrives. Growth thrives. See, look at your notes up above. Growth thrives. Don't you love that word thrives? <laughs> thrives in conducive surroundings. But growth is significantly diminished. Diminished when we get addicted to things, when things close in on us, when negative, uh, what? Negative emotions, negative words, all of these things, growth is significantly diminished in unhealthy environments. 
So we've got to find out what what can we do? We we need to brainstorm. We need suggestions. You can write suggestions down in the comments section, right? We need to get creative uh, in the teaching of our wonderful uh, uh, mentor and coach, John Maxwell, a uh, leadership uh, ser <laughs> services. <laughs> anyway, he quotes the advice of his mentor and friend, Elmer Towns, who told John to spend time with. These were like a brainstorming, a fine creative suggestions. Spend time, and he listed five, spend time doing five things. Meeting great people, number one. And if you can't do that live, you can do it through books. You can do it through other ways. You can do it through an inspirational lives and stories. Uh, you can do it through um, missions people that uh, inspire you, doctors that inspire you, uh, saints that inspire you. I remember once I I had a, a doc, missionary doctor that inspired me, a missionary doctor to Vietnam many, many years ago when it was controlled by the French, and this doctor's name was Tom Dooley. You can always remember the name because there's a song that goes with Tom Dooley. But Tom Dooley wrote some books about his experiences in Vietnam. And these, you know, really had an influence on my life, was a positive, influential environment on my thinking and my heart. Uh, he's the actual one that put in one of his books, The Woods Are Lovely, a Robert Frost, the ending of a Robert Frost poem. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. That means that the things in this world, uh, worldly material things are nice, they're great, there's all kinds of things you could do. The woods, the woods are, are packed with fruit and adventures and excitement. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. But the poem continued on and he put in his book, Dr. Tom Dooley, he put, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. What about Albert Schweitzer was another one that influenced me. His missionary work, taking care of the children and the families in Africa during famine times. Great inspiration in, to me growing up. So number one, we're brainstorming, great people, great inspirational lives, great saints. Number two, uh, this is one way that you can fulfill number one, read great books. Great books have this beautiful struggle so many times, most all of the time. Great books have this struggle between light and darkness between good and evil. And it portrays it in so many different ways, reading great books, great books. Maybe not so much just good books, the good books are good. But remember our saying, many times good is the worst enemy of the best. So read great books. Number three, visit great places. We're brainstorming, creative ideas. Visit great places. Attend great events. Number four. Number five, in summary, nourish yourself with great happenings. <laughs> great happenings, I don't know what that is. But you can imagine one of the ways to do this and to find out what to do is by brainstorming. and. In brainstorming, 
We've got, let's see here. I'm going to find a, a, one of my pictures that, just a second. Brainstorming, if you're sitting around a table, right? And uh, you're sharing ideas. And remember, no idea is wrong. No idea is bad. You need to tell everyone that any idea that you share, feel free. Don't worry about it being right or wrong or good or not so good. Because when you share creatively with one another, everyone gets to feel a part of a solution or a decision. And what happens in this kind of environment where people can share, people can open up their hearts and pour out their, their feelings, and their, their experiences. And all of that contributes, like you sitting around this table that you see here and sharing, and it's like putting all of your ideas and experiences into the center of the table. And then what happens is that if you're connected with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes down, just like on the day of Pentecost, and hovers, hovers over all of the ideas that everyone has shared, and somehow, some way, synthesizes, combines them into in such a way that all of the ideas form one brand new idea, solution to the situation or problem, whatever it is. And everybody all at once sees this new solution and everyone feels that they have a part. They have taken ownership of this solution or this answer that everyone was looking for. This is one of the ways they talk about wisdom. Wisdom many times is if you not knowing which way to go, if you turn to the right, it's a disaster, it's wrong. If you turn to the left, it's a nightmare. So you, whether you turn to the right or you turn to the left, it's not going to work, but wisdom is when something unique, something special is, how would you say it, ignited, and a light bulb, a light bulb comes on, and the answer, the solution, is made evident and appears to all. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. It appears to all. So it's interesting that being creative is fun. It's nice. So growth, uh, growth thrives in, in an environment like that. Growth thrives when you can share all of your ideas and then see together this invisible, beautiful force come and transform and change and synthesize and bring solutions, answers, and clarity. So it does. It sounds not complicated. Look at your notes. It sounds simple, but we are the ones that often complicate it. So don't complicate it. Just try to learn this principle of brainstorming together. Actually, here's the simple, simple truth. If we don't invest in ourselves, no one else is going to. We don't want, I mean, we, we, in an ideal world, every, that's what we're trying to build here. That's what we're trying to do. 
is because we're investing in ourselves, it's so that we can learn to love and appreciate and encourage and build up one another. That's what we're doing. That's the whole principle so that in this world, like the old song goes, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's just too little love. So that's what we're that's what we're up to in all of these lessons that we're trying to learn, that I'm trying to learn, is to not only go up in our relationship to God and relationship and devotion and church services and so forth, but as the cross goes not only up, it goes out that we must learn to love ourselves and one another. So the simple truth, if we don't invest in ourselves, probably no one else is going to. So we don't want to end up being cranky and bitter all of our life. We want to be the kind of person who brings life to those around you your loved ones, your family, your team, your group, your classmates, someone who comes with a healthy, positive perspective, fresh eyes, a sense of wonder and amazement at what the world has to offer. Wow, that's the kind of person we want to be. And it depends on our environment. So you probably knew this already. I probably knew it already. But we're, re we're doing a refresher course, a reboot course to renew things that we've probably already known. And so this is that. So this, all of this means making time to create a growth environment that will help us all to be the very best we can be. See at the bottom of the notes the questions for reflection and the questions for group if you happen to be doing this with a group. So let's, we hear today all over the world, let's improve our environment. Maybe it's true. Maybe if, first of all, we improve our internal environment. Maybe this is the secret. Maybe this is the key to the ecological nightmares that have covered the globe, the earth. Maybe this is the answer to the planet Earth Environment Day. First, we get our priorities right. First, we internally improve and clean <laughs> our environment and then watch what happen, begins to happen after we do that almost automatically. We will see clearly how to improve our outer environment. You get it? Got it? Okay, good. Here we go. See you next time.